us to the fourth episode in a series of episodes that are focused on the 2023 20, GCE Science Paper 1, which is Physics. So in the previous three episodes, we covered question 1 through 15. So in this episode, we're going to start with question 16. Just in case you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel or you are coming across my YouTube channel for the first time, please consider subscribing to my channel so that every time I upload a video, you get the notification. And also, if you find this video to be helpful, consider liking. By liking, you help my channel to reach as many people as possible. The following diagram shows a cathode ray oscilloscope with a bright spot formed from an AC generator. So we have an AC generator, then we have the image there. Which part of the cathode ray oscilloscope brings the movement observed? So we're looking for the part that brings about this movement. A, Y plates, B, X plates, C, cathode, D, anode. So we can start by eliminating the obvious ones, which is C and D, D. You notice that the cathode ray is part of the electron gun assembly of the cathode ray oscilloscope, which generates the electron beam. While the cathode is crucial for the operation of the cathode ray oscilloscope, it does not directly control the movement of the bright spot on the screen. So this is out. Similarly, the anode is part of the electron gun assembly which helps to accelerate electrons. So this is the accelerate, accelerate electrons, beam, this generate electron beam. So these are out. They don't control the oblite spot movement on the screen. So now we've taken out the two obvious. So take note of the x function of these two. So remain with A and D, B. So if you notice the movement on the screen, this is we have this vertical part, then we have the horizontal part. So we have two bright spots that we are observing on the screen based on the image. Then now we need to choose the answer. So if you look at the screen, you notice that this is a close like blight spot movement on the cathode ray oscilloscope screen. So this is a blot about when you connect to an AC generator by the X plates and the, the Y plates. So this is supposed to be in the X Y mode. So it's supposed to be. So in this case one AC signal which is in the AC generator controls the horizontal de deflection which is in brought about by the X in plates which is in the horizontal. So this is horizontal. Then the other AC signal controls the vertical deflection which is in brought about in the Y plates when in the, this AC is applied to the Y plate. This is the vertical so this is in the Y plates. So now we have two. So this one is Y plates. Then this is the X plates. So you see these two. So in this case, you note that the resulting pattern is a plot of one signal against the other, which can form various shapes, including a cross, so the one you are seeing there, depending on the phase relationship and frequencies of all the two signals. So in this case, you notice that both A and B would be correct because this is the cross. If it was like this, we are going to say the X plate. If it was a vertical, we are going to say the Y plates. So in this case, both A and B could be correct because we are using the X mode. Unless there was a mistake, there is no spot that we cannot spot exactly with our naked eye. So in this case, either B or A would be correct, but because the horizontal axis is longer than, way longer than the vertical axis, I would go for the X plates. But in either way, A and B should be all correct. So I'm using the assumption that the horizontal blind spot is way longer than the vertical one. So I would be tempted to go with him B because all the two are correct. 
Question A17 start the security diagram shown. Then the question calculate the value of resistor X given that the ammeter reading is 2.5 amperes. So if you look at the security diagram, we've got 8 volts, then we've got the ammeter, then we've got resistor 1, then this will be resistor 2, then this will be resistor 3. So we have two resistors in parallel, then one in the series we feel respect to the other two. So to answer this question, we need to know the total current flowing in this circuit. So we know from voltage is equal to current multiplied by resistor. So to find current, we divide voltage by resistor. So the voltage is 8 volts, then current is 2 0.5 ampere as from the emitter. So it will be 8 divided by 2.5 which will give us 3.2 ohms. So this is the total resistor. So since we know that the resistors in that line, this will give us a total resistor. So now to find the total resistor in the parallel, which is this part, we need to subtract this one from the total. So the resistor in the parallel circuit is equal to now the total resistor minus resistor in the series. That's the principle that you so it will be 3.2 minus 2 which will give us 1.2 ohms. So this is the total resistor across the parallel resistors. So these two, these two. That's it, the total. But we are looking for X. So the temptation is someone to find that and just come and pick A, which is incorrect. So A cannot be collect because A is in the total resistor for the two resistors. Then we know that the total resistor for resistors in the parallel is equal to resistor 1 multiplied by resistor 2 if there are 3, multiply all of them, 3, then resistor 1 plus resistor 2. This will give you the total in the parallel, total resistor in parallel. So now what this tells me is, now it will be 2 times x, which is 2x, over, I am substituting, it will be 2 plus x. This must give me 1.2. Then I need to solve for x. So I can solve for x by doing cross multiplying. So now we're going to multiply this by that, then one multiply by that. So let me create new space. So it will be 1 times 2x. So we're going to have 2x is equal to 1.2 multiplied by 2 plus x. So we have that from this equation. Then next is just simplify. So to have 2x is equal to 1.2 times 2 is 2.4. Then 1.2 times x is 1.2x. So we have that. So it will be 2x. Then this one comes this side becomes a minus. So minus 1.2x is equal to 2.4. Then this difference is 0.8x is equal to 2.4. Now this 2.4 these are ohms. So we divide by 0.8. We divide by 0.8. This one and this one cancels. So x is equal to 3.0 ohms. So this is the answer. So when you go to the options, you discover that D is the correct answer. So this is how you answer this question. Question A18 start the following diagram. So we have the input, then the, the output. What name is given to the electrical device shown in the diagram? So if you notice this one, this is a, a transformer. So this is not a generator, it's a transformer. So, you notice that this one and this one are out. A and D, B are out because this is not a generator but a transformer. So now, we have the, the primary coil, which is this one. So this is the primary, then we have this is the secondary. So the primary coil has more turns than the secondary. So because of this, this should be a step down transformer because it reduces the voltage from the input to the output. 
So if you look at the option, you discover that C is the best answer. So what it determines whether it's step up or step down is the number of coil from the input side, which is the primary, to the output. So if the coil in the input side are more than in the output is a step down. If it's the opposite, here we have few, then here we have more, then that's a step up. So you do need to take note of that. Question A19, which radiation is used to increase the shelf life of fruits and the vegetables? We have A, gamma lamp, B, infrared, C, luntgen, D, ultraviolet. So for all information, luntgen is also known as the x lamp. So this is x ray. That's the other name for x lamp. So among these, the correct answer is gamma radiation. So gamma radiation is what is used to extend the shelf life of fruits and vegetables in chain stores. Then on the other hand, if you look at infrared, infrared is used in various applications such as electrical eaters, cookers for cooking food and short range communications like remote controls, optical fiber, security systems and thermal imaging. Take note of those key uses. Then if you look at X-ray, so the X-ray is used for us checking a number of things in medical diagnostics such as checking the block, broken bones and also material science e.g. identification of some chemical elements and detecting weak points in construction materials. Then ultraviolet is also used in a number of medical therapy and also in photography. It is used in tanning lamps, chemistry, lighting, cancer treatment and photography. So those are the key uses. So it's just a matter of knowing the key uses. Question 820. Iodine is a radioactive substance with a half-life of 80 days. What fraction of iodine will remain after undergoing a series of disintegration for 32 days? So the time is 32 days. And again, this is a common question that always comes in an exam. So to answer this question, you need to just know the simple half-life equation. Always question 20 will ask you about half-life. So half-life is in. So the amount at a given time is given by the original amount multiplied by 1 over 2 to the power 1 time, which is the period over the half-life. So the period in this case is 32 days. So T is equal to 32 days. Then H is equal to 80 days. Then we're looking for the fraction. So meaning at the beginning we have 1, which is the whole thing. So in this case now, what remains at the end of 32 days to be 1 multiplied by 1 over 2, then over period which is 32, over half-life which is 8. So we're going to have 1 times anything is that thing. So it's half, then 8 into 32 is 4. So this is to the power 4, it will be 1 to the power 4 over 2 to the power 4, which is equal to 1 over 2 times 2 is 4 times 2, 8 times 2, 16. So it's 1 over 16. So 1 over 16 is the correct answer. Because after 8 days, half of it is gone, so remain with you, half. Then after another day, half of half is gone, remain with 1 over 4. Then after another 8 days, half of 1 over 4 is 1 over 8. Then after another 32, half of 1 over 8 is 1 over 16. So C is the correct answer in this case. So this is how you answer these questions. So thank you for joining me in this series of episodes. Please join me in the next episode as we start looking at section B in detail.